Hello everybody, Karm3D with you on the tube once again. It's been a long time. Uh, before I go into my tutorial, I wanted to point out a couple things. Um, first of all, it, since the last video I made, YouTube has switched over to using the Google Plus for the comments, so uh, I don't have a Google Plus account. I won't be getting a Google Plus account, so feel free to comment down there if you want. I can't respond to it. If you want me to contact you, just uh, use my website and click the contact button. It's pretty simple. But uh, feel free to talk amongst yourselves down there if you want to. Uh, I got a new computer. I got, I'm got using a different microphone. So I'm going to try these videos at 720 for a bit, see what that's like. I'm doing this video in Lightwave 11. I don't have a 2015. It's brand new. I don't have the money for it yet. But uh, that's about it. Let's move on to the tutorial. Oh. Oh, this is sad. Oh. Okay, <clears throat> so this video we're going to talk about some uh, methods for getting faster results when working with high density characters. Characters, character models with lots of polygons that uh, may slow down your computer, especially if you're using a smaller, older computer, a laptop, something like that. Uh, this, this model is, is actually not very dense, but it, it's just going to be for example. So let's uh, switch to wireframe. You can see he's fairly dense because he is subdivided. Uh, the first thing you can do is not click that. Select him, hit properties, and right here, display sub patch level. Change this to zero, the, the mesh becomes a lot less dense. That's the first thing you can do, it's very common. Put it at zero, leave it there, and that will help tremendously. The next thing you can do is to create proxy models. Go on another layer here. Proxy models are very simple shapes that you can create. Let's say, uh, let's make a disk. Put that where his upper arm is. Kind of shape it the way you want. There we go. And then just um, put the pivot point in the middle of that. It's a, it's a good idea to put the pivot point in the middle of the shape you're editing because if it's down at 0, 0, 0, you're going to have a giant bounding box for a shape that is not that giant. So basically you would make one of these shapes and put them in separate layers for each one of the, the joints, uh, you know, joint elements, segments of this character. And then uh, load these layers into your scene and then using parent in place, parent them to one, each of your bones. And since they're not actually being deformed by the bones, they're just moving along with the bones, it'll move tremendously fast. So proxy models is an excellent option for speeding up character animation when you get dense character models. But that's not going to help for every situation. That's, that's good for the body stuff. When it comes to editing the face, this is something that I came up with, as far as I know, I came up with this, uh, maybe somebody else thought of this, but it deals with deleting everything but the face and then saving that as an alternate model. Save that as Mopi face. 
So this has always been one of Lightwave's strengths, the uh, modular approach to the objects in the scene. You can swap them out. So before I swap them out, I want to show you something in this scene. You can see I created a little morph for his uh, arm bicep area. So his arm thickens when he bends his arm. Just wanted to point that out. Alright, let's load that scene up again fresh. Now we'll go to item replace with object and change that to mopey face. Okay. So now only his face is in there, so things will move a lot faster, which is ideal for doing all of your facial animation. Now this character doesn't have any facial rigging, but uh, let's just pretend that we've gone through and yada yada yada, animated the face. Now we're going to save this. It is number two. Clear the scene. Load the scene. Because it's very plausible that you will not be able to do all your facial animation in one session. You may have to clear the scene, go get something to eat. Let's uh, put the original model back in there. So now we got the original model with the facial animation added. But let's look at something. Notice that the bicep flexing is gone now. That's because the face model did not have any of that morph information in it. So if that happens, uh, Lightwave will just uh, remove that morph without any warning. Now if you go in the graph editor, let's look at our expressions. The expressions I made for it are still there, but they're just not applied, so I would have to reapply. But there's a better way. I call this adding a brain. I just make a cube or a box inside the head. Doesn't have to be perfect or anything. And I call it the brain because it remembers. So let's select a point from this, choose that bicep morph, and just give it a little offset. Choose the other bicep side, give it a little offset. Now let's cut that, put that in here, save the model. Now let's select our brain, select connected. Now we can select all the polygons of the face. Invert our selection with the quote key, delete. Save object as mopey face. Let's load our original scene. Replace the object. Do our facial animation. Save the scene. All right, let's clear everything out. Load the scene up. Replace the object. It's still there. Okay, that's good. Now, there are a couple other things you can do with the brain here. First thing you can do is select all the points, go into weight map, and make a new weight map, call it clip. 
with 100%. You can see it's all red there. Basically, that means when we select our object, go into Properties, Render, Clip Map. We, when we choose that clip map, it looks like I had this already set up. You can put that in the weight map and then whatever is 100% will be clipped. It will not render. So you don't have to worry about this being any kind of issue with rendering. It will remain invisible. Other things you can do, we can go into the head weight map and also tell that to be 100%. Basically, that means it'll follow the head bone, so it stays inside the head. Even when we swapped the uh, original model with the face model, the bones were still assigned correctly. There was no issue with that. But, there may be some issue that may arise if you're using weight maps for other things. Maybe you're doing some fancy stuff in nodes or uh, I don't you know, anywhere else. So what you could do very easily is uh, go to your weight tool and actually I'll bring up the uh, vertex map panel it'll be a little faster and I just go down the line and just give a little bit of value to one of the points in every weight we got clip already got the head there we go and then the same thing with the morphs we got the bicep. We did that already. He only has two biceps. And this character only has one UV map. Let, let's go ahead and put it in there anyway. So there's, there's my one UV map here. Let's go into UV maps more. Edit UVs. All the way down to the bottom, unfortunately it's off the screen here where it says more. And once again it's off the screen, I'm choosing texture guide. Hit the end key and you will see this little gadget that pops up. Doesn't matter where you place it really. The key part is say make UVs and it will apply. You see the little box appeared here. So it's, it's added the brain to this existing UV map. And you can move that off the side if you want. It doesn't really matter where it is because it's clipped. It will not render whatsoever. So there you go. So if you want to avoid every any possible issue, just make sure that uh, part of your brain is using every single vertex map you have. I, I'm only using weights, textures, and morphs. I'm not using the C or the S, but um, that's my tip. Add a brain to your character and then uh, you can use this for only working on the face, only working on the hands, any way you want to do it. You can swap the model out as much as you like and there will be no issues as long as your brain has that information in it. So that's it. Enjoy and I'll talk to you later.